This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview leading biases from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is Jennifer Boisco. So Jennifer, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Frank. It's good to be here. Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself. You're a delegate. Yes. What, uh, where, you know, delegate of what and, uh, and where do you, uh, who do you represent? and what have been your accomplishments, and then I will get to the second question. Sure, thank you, Frank. I represent the 86th District in and the where, House of which Delegates. Is, where is that? That is Herndon, okay. Oak Hill, parts of Chantilly, and Sterling Park. So okay. it's the western Fairfax County, and uh, just very eastern Loudoun County. Okay. And before I did this, I worked for John Faust, the Drainsville Supervisor, yes. representing him in my part of the county. Um, um, and you, I've used that as um, a great background to help solve problems in the House of Delegates since I've been elected since 2015. So what have you accomplished that you deserve to be elected and re-elected for the next term? Well, I, I feel really proud of the work that I've done. Um, I, Such as? I helped, um, I, I have helped pass a number of bills, 16 of them 16 this of year. 16 of them, wow. Um, yes. In, bipartisan in support? Bipartisan support with my colleagues as a co-sponsor. I've also uh, been the, the chief patron of several bills as well, uh, specifically focusing on issues around um, mental health mental primarily, health. and then local jurisdictional issues um, wow. as well. So what's your campaign themes uh, to the viewer who wants to elect you mm -hmm. to be, are they want to keep you <laughs> as a member of the uh, Virginia House delegate. Sure. Well, I'm a Democrat. I represent a community that is very diverse. We have uh, about 21% Latin American, 21% Asian American, including Indian Americans, 8% mm -hmm. African Americans. Um, so it's a so very... So that's about more than 50%. It is, right. And it's a very richly diverse community. Very richly diverse. Very high um, technology industry, as well as some folks who are really struggling. And I have made an effort to be a voice and to make sure that I'm listening and going out into the community to, to make sure that I am being accessible to everyone. Um, I believe that being a public servant means that you are in the community, working with your community, helping solve problems, and being the voice for them. So, so you want to be the problem solver? Yes. You want to make a difference? That's correct. You want to have a strong impact and influence in people's lives. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have a positive impact rather than be a polarizing and divisive, which is what we have right now. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> correct? Yeah. So, you know, uh, th there's uh, several issues that the uh, state of Virginia faces, mm -hmm. and one of the most important uh, issues that faces about the uh, the Medicaid expansion, and the under the current a, um, mm -hmm. what they call the Cassidy Graham bill, uh, which I, I do not know that they're going to be passed or not. They have been trying for seven years and not being. So I have uh, two questions. Number one, why do they do what they're doing? They know that 67% of Americans favor ACA. Mm -hmm. They know there's going to be 22 million people according to CBOs not going to have any coverage. Right. They know there will be problems with the Medicaid. Uh, so my question, why do they do what they're doing? And, and what, what do you think uh, the ACA should be passed or should not be passed? Or, I'm talking about repealing of it and replacing it. That's mm -hmm. what they're trying to do, not repairing it. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you believe in a bipartisan support so that, so that we can do a little bit better and more mm -hmm. cost effective so that we can, have a, we can provide the um, health care to all the people who deserve it. So right. this is what you believe in it. Yeah, so I supported the, American, the, the, the ACA, the health care. The American, um, which is called? Uh, health care act. Uh, Obama, President Obama would tell we me call it's it called Obamacare. Obama right? He said, I do care. That's what he said. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act. I'm okay. a supporter of that. I, I know that there and are your, some challenges. And your constituency has it benefited from that? They would. And they would have uh, benefited more had we expanded Medicaid, which is the state-run program. We give over $5 million away in federal taxes that we're paying every day, um, leaving 400,000 Virginians without care. So one, I would, I, I, I'm a strong supporter of the ACA, but I'm also a strong supporter of expanding Medicaid. Now, if we're talking about repealing the ACA, if 
let's think about if we were a technology company and we had a and we had a product that had some some bugs in it. Would we just scrap the whole pro? Would we would we scrap that or would we go for, you know, ACA 2.0 and improve it? Um, improve it, make it more effective. Right, and so that's repair it. Repair, that's not the way. not. Eliminate. So, so why do they do what they're doing it and how do you tell your colleagues on the other side of the mm -hmm. aisle that you are misguided and your views are dis desperate and distorted? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, Frank, because if I have personal conversations with some of my colleagues one-on-one, -on -one, they know that um, health care is important for their constituents. What they're afraid of and what I think some partisan members have done is they have frightened them so much that they're going to get uh, an attack from the right, an opponent from the right. They also lie, as I understand from the people, and for example, they, in order for them to win, Senator from a, uh, Maine, which is Senator Collins, mm -hmm. Senator Mikulski from uh, Senator Lisa Mikulski, is that her name is? Murkowski. Murkowski mm -hmm. from, uh, she's the daughter of Frank Murkowski, correct? Mm -hmm. Uh, they have tailored it such a way that they can attract those those two senators. So it is a, not targeted for all Americans, right. targeted for certain right. individuals to win the vote. Mm -hmm. But how do they go about and telling and stand up and say, I believe I believe what they're doing is right? That, that's a good question. <laughs> I I don't I don't agree with what they're doing. I think we need to, you know, our job as public servants is to make the world to, a better place a, yes. for our community and use the government as a tool to help empower folks. Um, so I can't answer that question because it fat, you know, it's beyond my comprehension. Is it beyond your paycheck? It's beyond my paycheck. <laughs> it's beyond my comprehension. Not only is it an economic um, e strength for us to have a strong health care system, but it's also one of a moral imperative. And I oh, uh, obviously, the uh, CBO, which is the Congressional Office, uh, mm -hmm. has, has not been able to give their analysis yet. And uh, so I don't, uh, I'm sure uh, I don't want to beat this uh, horse again. Mm -hmm. So let me just move on to the questions that I have about the redistricting, which is gerrymandering, and economy and job and immigration. So the fourth thing I want to talk to you about. Okay. So where would you like to start? Or wherever you <laughs> want to start, Jennifer. Well, I think it all comes down, uh, you know, if we want to talk about redistricting, I've actually heard more from my constituents about redistricting than any other bill. Um, when, we, when we talk about the big partisan fights that we have, it's because we've created districts that appeal to one very specific type of so person. So it's ideological differences. Yes. And then we don't have to listen to the other side. So I believe that we, uh, members of the House of Delegates or in Congress, should not be choosing our own voters. We need an independent uh, commission to help make fair districts that have a balance where everybody's voice counts. And I serve on the Privileges and Elections Committee. I, I had a bird's eye view on the debate this past year where mm -hmm. we couldn't even get a vote. Out well, on it. it helps them, Jennifer, because the fact is that you have a Republican governor, they can do gerrymandering yes. and they can redistricting mm -hmm. and all the elections that were local, so as a result of that, they win. Right. And this is what's happening with the whole uh, U.S. House Representative. They, they, it's a, they have gerrymandered such a way because two thirds of the governors are Republican, they're mm -hmm. not a Democrat. I, I know. Yet, <laughs> I, I mean, if we look in Virginia specifically, all five of our statewide officials are Democrats, um, and yet we only have 34 out of 100 members in the House of Delegates so who are cannot, Democrats. So you cannot pass anything. In Correct. The so we play a lot of defense. We, we, you know, we work with Terry McAuliffe, our governor, to stop some really heinous um, Well, he can veto it. That's the, Correct. And then yeah. we get to, we, we right. support him on that. So uh, the other question that I had about the economy and job, mm -hmm. and the third question was mm -hmm. about the immigration. And, sure. And the, so shed some light on the bright light on it, if you can. Sure. On the economy and jobs, I serve on the Broadband Advisory Council, okay. working to expand internet access across the Commonwealth. Um, that's something that I've enjoyed doing because we do want our, our neighbors downstate to have a thriving economy because Northern Virginia can't carry the whole load forever, right? Um, we need to make certain that Dulles Airport is a big success and I was very happy to be on the tarmac the first day that the Air India yeah, plane landed, landed yes. 
Um, and we also want to make sure that things like our transportation system in you know our metro works that we are training people for the 21st century jobs mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew this but we have more you know, tens of thousands of jobs two million jobs open that are and, and open. they cannot be they but cannot be filled because the people, people don't have the not, skills ability and experience right. to do that so I want to work with my colleagues across the aisle as well as Ralph Northam to make sure that we are training people for those jobs whether they're in cybersecurity where they're in the trades making sure that we have the skilled workforce that is necessary in the 21st century and that's my very high priority and and our education system also has to be top right and that's that's where I've really focused a lot of my time in so energy. education uh, not the higher education but the community college education mm -hmm. where they can learn the tra trade so they mm -hmm. become part of the workforce and education also K through 12 correct uh, those are the important aspects as well because this is when they lay the firm foundation for them to flourish. Correct. And in our K through 12, I mean, we've really taught our kids how to take a multiple choice test really well. But don't we need to be focusing on problem solving and critical thinking? I, I, I know we both agree on that. Um, so I think we have some more work to do um, in giving autonomy to the teachers and paying them a good salary as well. All right. Uh, obviously, the, the, the salary to the teachers are not that great. They're not that Virginia. great. <laughs> they're not <laughs> that great. And and they, they're teaching the next generations of the Americans who are the Correct. hope for tomorrow. Exactly. Uh, we want people to be able to. So what is the argument the other side? Why why they're doing why people why we cannot pass in the House or the or the Senate in the Virginia Commonwealth of Virginia to make sure the to make sure the teachers are well taken care of because they are creating the next mm -hmm. generations of the Americans. That's true. This past year we had bipartisan support you for, did have bipartisan for support. Uh, an investment in this past uh, budget for a billion dollars for education, which was the most so we've done in a number. So education for the higher education? Or for the, the K through 12 K education. K through 12 education. Mm -hmm. So that was, there had been a steady decline since I believe 2009 and we're still not back up to our our funding from 2009. We are making slow and steady progress. Um, and, you know, the needs are great. Um, I think we focus too much on, on the testing part and less uh, giving the teachers the creativity in the classroom. So there's some administrative things we can do, um, making sure that educators have a seat at the table as they're deciding what the policies are. Because I, while I'm a mother of two kids who went through school and was on the PTA, I'm not a teacher. So I, I, I ask us to but listen to But you admire and appreciate the profession, what they I do. I surely do. And I think they need to have a seat at the table as we're making decisions about what they have to do. So a lot of people, and Manisha just was here a, mi mm -hmm. a minute ago and interviewed her, and she focused on inclusive. Yes. Part of America is hatred and bigotry, and obviously, uh, there are a lot of tweets on that uh, as well. <laughs> People are concerned, mm -hmm. stressed out in some cases. Yes. Uh, that does not represent the value, the conscience, and character of this country. This country remains a shining city upon a hill, as President Ronald Reagan said, or John F. Kennedy said, or John Winthrop said mm -hmm. in 1632 when they came to our shore. And they came all, they're all immigrants, whether they're first generation immigrant right. or they came here many, many centuries ago. They came here because of the economic mobility, or, the, or they escaped the political prosecution. So we have been we have been a welcoming country for a many many. We are in, indeed a shining city upon a hill. All the eyes are upon us. So tell us a little bit about what would you do to make sure that we need to protect our borders as well. Yes, we so do. The border security is an important aspect. Is so. What do you think to make the society more fairer, more stronger, more just, more tolerant? America. <laughs> well, I would think that leadership from the top <laughs> has to. Um, yeah. Well, unfortunately, it does not. Uh, leadership on the top, as you all know, uh, doesn't uh, set a very good tone for uh, us. Does not set the tone, and also, I don't know how you tell your children that they, that the, some people have a foul mouth as well. Mm -hmm. So obviously, that's it. But to considering, sure. we don't have a trump card here. We don't know how to play those cards yet. Right. So we have to figure out what to do. Yes. So when You he, have to figure it out. That's right. And so, for instance, this summer when the Muslim ban was taking place. You I, were there. I the was there. I was there with Terry McAuliffe, with, with Mark Herring, our Attorney General, with a number of my colleagues saying, hate has no home here and we are here with you. We stand with you. I spend a lot of time in our immigrant community because I know that there are families who are afraid to send their kids to after-school programs. I have friends who 
are, you know, bullied in the grocery store sometimes. This is not tolerated. We should not tolerate this. And it, it's going to take all of us standing together, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, standing up to, to this kind of bullying. Um, the federal government has fallen short of its responsibility for for comprehensive immigration reform. Well, the Senate passed the bill. But and we they, couldn't get the, House, the House to do it. Get, right. They well, just So stayed. despite the fact that they're against the ACA, despite mm -hmm. the fact they're against the DACA, despite mm -hmm. the fact that they, they're against the DREAM Act, the fact uh, a comprehensive immigration, which immigration is important, they mm -hmm. reduce the H-1 visa, which will, will reduce the GDP by 0.7%. And they still get reelected. So I tell know. me, why is that, Jennifer? Do you gerrymandered districts? Let's <laughs> just go back. Is to, that what it is? We go back so to the gerrymandered districts. So we have a districts. certain certain individual in our country, the people, the populations, mm -hmm. who are those are who are closeted, uh, who believe they're not misguided. They're guided by by certain they are philosophy and approach. A, a point of view that is different than mine, for instance, but it is their point of view. But yeah, I mean. I had, I had a group of kids in my office from George Mason recently talking about their fears about DACA. And so... And there's what, 800,000? Yeah. And they have, they bought, they, it is These not their fault they came here. No. They go to school, they're building a job, they're creating a they're, job, they're building our their, economy. They're, they're doing a lot of good things. They've had their backgrounds. Yes. They're, they're working or they're going to school. They're productive members of our so community. So what, what makes them do this thing? What is the, yeah. what's the motivation? Is it well, probably beyond our comprehension? Uh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> is that correct? I think, I think driving a narrative of fear and division is effective. So it's not a hope, it's a fear, I think anxiety. Yes. And I think by doing that, then they don't have to talk about the big issues of economic So they're diverting their attention? Yeah. Is that what they're doing? That's what I believe. That's what I believe, and I think it's very effective. Uh, so they're good in messaging, obviously. Mm -hmm. They're good salespeople. They right? are. Uh, they cannot govern, but they can But they get can elected. certainly get a talking point across, <laughs> right? Exactly. So, so I want to uh, uh, kind of focus a little bit, uh, Jennifer, in terms of the traffic congestion. You, you talked a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you intend to do to, to reduce the traffic congestion that we have in Northern Virginia? Mm -hmm. I, I'm really fortunate to have a good, back, a good solid background in local transportation issues because I worked for the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors where I covered transportation issues for Supervisor John Faust. Um, I worked on the land use and transportation um, around the proposed Silver Line Metro stations. And one thing that we did, and we'll, we need to continue to do, is talk to each other across jurisdictional mm -hmm. boundaries. So, for instance, I helped pull together at the staff level and then at the elected officials level groups of meetings where we looked at the big map and we talked across the border. What do we need to do in Fairfax County, Town of Herndon, Loudoun County, with the airport and VDOT to make sure that we're really looking at a uh, comprehensive you, do picture. Do you believe in the metro has to be extended all the way to the Prince William County? And it'll cost, cost a lot of money, several that's, hundred million yeah. dollars. Yeah, I mean, that is that is so far down the line. I don't <laughs> I don't know when we'll be able to um, to manage that, but I think any way we can get cars off the road is an effective one. The other thing is multimodal transportation. So the metro, make sure that the metro is functioning and safe and working for everyone, but also bus systems, making sure that we have uh, ride sharing and all sorts of carpooling opportunities. And then things like bike lanes um, are essential to trying to get people off the road. The second thing is having transit-oriented development where you are putting your development in areas where you can get people off the roads because they're going to get onto the metro. But you're also having housing and um, work um, offices as well as commercial around those hubs once again, it's an economic engine for mm -hmm. the community, but it's also a way to get folks off the road and reducing traffic. And then thirdly, things like tele, telecommuting. Te telecommuting. And then getting, again, I'll go back to my broadband advisory council, making sure that the whole Commonwealth has a vibrant economy so everybody doesn't have to move to Northern Virginia, so that people can stay in Southwest Virginia and still be able to work. Um, in a successful and, job. Uh, and put the food on the table. Yes. Have a roof on their head. Their, yes. A roof on their head. I mean, that's what we all care about. We have more in common than, than So not. if somebody wants to get hold of you, mm -hmm. your constituency, people sure. in Northern Virginia, and mm -hmm. want to get involved with your mm -hmm. re-election campaign, sure. how did they go about doing that? Well, the easiest way oh, would be... You have to look at the uh, audience okay. there, Jennifer. Okay. The easiest way would be to go to my website, www.jenniferboisco, and I'll spell that for you. 
J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-B-O-Y-S-K-O.com. You can reach us there. Um, we are, we are, ha we have a wonderful field program going on. I am out canvassing every day. I need your help. If you'd like to have a yard sign or just get more involved and learn more about me, I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and. Um, what about the uh, the grassroots uh, in terms of the going there and voting? Make sure their voices are heard. Yes, so that's important, and especially right. the. Millennium. Uh, is yes. that, do you have any, any message for them? I do have a message. When, <laughs> the first time that I ran for office, I came this close to winning against a very long-term incumbent. I lost by 32 votes. Oh my God. Out of 21,000 votes cast, your vote really makes a difference. So whether you're in college and or working a full-time job and don't have the ability to get to the polls on election day, you can go to Fairfax County Government Center and vote early. Um, if, you, if you're unable to go in, in person, you can request an absentee ballot online. But your polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. You go to your regular polling place. It's really imperative that we re-elect um, Mark Herring to the Attorney General's seat. And the governor. And Ralph Northam to the governor, Justin Fairfax to the lieutenant governor. I very much ask for your vote and ask you to get your friends and neighbors to make sure that they come out and vote as well. I believe, I'm going to be partisan here, I believe the Democrats have the message this year, and I ask you to think very carefully when you go to the polls, um, there's so much on the table, the votes that we make make a difference there's in your so much every stake. day. There's so much at stake. Yeah. Yes. So thank you very much for your service Frank, to our country, you. Jennifer, and do you have any last, last word? I just want to say that it's a great honor to serve, that we really, uh, you know, it's, it's an you honor to be here. I want to continue to serve the, I would uh, like to. Uh, uh, your Absolutely. constituency, your country, your community. Absolutely. Okay. It's my honor. Thank but you thank so much, Frank. You're most welcome. Thank you for coming to our show. I appreciate and it. And good luck to you. Thank you. This is Frank Islam wishing you a great week, and thank you for watching.